to rewrite square roots of a negative number as a complex number. <coughs> Write the complex conjugate of a complex number, add, subtract, multiply, divide the two complex numbers, and solve quadratic equations that have complex solutions. We might not get to solving the equations yet, but don't worry, I'm sure you've already done it before. So let's start with what in the world is, where did the complex numbers come from in the first place? Well, somewhere along the way, there was a mathematician who ended up solving an equation and found out that you have, that he solved and he got the square root of negative 1. And they decided that, or he decided, that he needed to deal with this. And so he referred, started referring this, to this as i. And then they came up with basic arithmetic that you can do with i and other things that you can use i for. So we can, base, we can do arithmetic with i. And i is the square root of negative 1. Now, we can add things to i. We can multiply things by i. We can do lots of stuff. In general, okay, this is not <laughs> in general, a complex number looks like a plus b times i. a and b are real numbers. So these are like five, negative five, a half, three quarters, square root of two. These can be real numbers, any real numbers. They can even be zero. This part without the i is referred to as the real part. And this part with the i is the imaginary part. Is five a complex number? Are you sure? Yeah. Can you write it this way? No. Are you sure? Yeah, you can't remember. Five by itself? Five. Is it, it a complex five number? Five plus zero i. I can write it as five plus zero i. Then it's a complex number. Every number that you've had before that's been real <coughs> is really part of the complex numbers where the imaginary part is equal to zero. What we're going to get now is complex numbers where the imaginary part's not equal to zero, and we're going to have to start playing with them. But before we do that, we want to do this. Let's skip this page and go right here. We want to rewrite the square root so that there's no longer a negative sign under there. If you ever have a square root with a negative sign under it, you must rewrite it so that there's no negative sign. How do I get rid of the negative sign? That's where the i comes in. So the square, I've got to find a pen that writes. Square root of negative 4. <coughs> what do I, where do I put the i? Is it under the square root sign or is it outside the square root sign? The, square, the i goes outside the square root sign. I always put mine in front because I want to make sure it doesn't look like it's under the square root symbol. And then I can deal with the square root of 4. What's that? 2. 2. So this is just 2i. The i only takes care of the negative part. It doesn't do anything to the square root part, the number that's under there. What about the square root of negative 36? Six i. Everybody okay with that? What about the square root of negative five? I square root five. So I heard five i and I heard an i root five. Which one is it? I it's the i times the square root of five because the i only takes care of the negative sign. It does not remove the square root. The square root of five part is still there, and I'm not going to bother to figure out what it is. I'm just going to write the square root of five. Keep in mind when you have to do this on web work, your SQRT is what you use for your square root. You want parentheses around your 5, especially if you write your i afterwards, so that web work knows you don't mean for that i to be included in what you're taking the square root of. It's really hard sometimes even when you preview it to see if it's under or not, because i is pretty small and it only goes over by a little bit. Now, we need to be able to add complex numbers. How do you think you do that? What? What do you think? Don't you have like the first one and the second one? 
Yeah, combine like terms. <laughs> yeah, the better way to put it is to combine like terms. If the pairs are written correctly, yes, it would be add the, do the first ones and do the second ones. But if they're, re if they're not necessarily in order, you put together the things that are the same. So we put together the real parts, so the three and the six, and get a nine. <coughs> And we put together the imaginary parts using addition, so negative 2 and an i and a negative 4i will give me a negative 6i. Now in web work, I need to warn you what's going to happen. Web work knows how to add complex numbers. And so to keep you from just writing the problem in and not doing it, they had to write the problem kind of strangely. They say, okay, evaluate this. Your answer needs to be in the form a plus bi and then it will ask you what A is and what B is. What is A in my problem? Nine. What is B in my problem? Negative six. Negative six, because this has a plus in order to get the negative, you need to make a negative six. <coughs> Notice there's no I, because the B is just the number in front of the I. And so that's why these are broken up, because WebWork can do this addition. And in order to make you do it, they have to ask the question kind of strangely. What about <coughs> subtraction? Is it going to work the same way? Yeah, yeah probably. you got to distribute the negative sign. you got to distribute the negative sign, but basically you're combining like terms again once you've distributed the negative sign. So when I distribute the negative sign in this one, I'll have 5 minus 5i five plus 8 plus 2i, and so when I put it all together, I get 13 minus 3i. This is pretty reasonable when they came up with how to add and subtract complex numbers, don't you think? 